right, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Welcome once more to another video broadcast of Political News Time brought to you by the PNT Live Network. And remember, you can always find archives of this podcast along with many others over on pntlive.net. I'm your hostess, Alex Mayers. I hope all of you are having a decent week. I am. Tonight we are going to talk about politics, but we're also going to talk about some other matters that uniquely affect retired, current, or um, ex, maybe I should say escapee, adult performers. All right, actually, let me just go ahead and read to you what I just um, tweeted in regards to what we're going to discuss tonight because I really didn't want to um, have to go where I have to go, but I am concerned about a certain individual's safety because I don't think that she exactly thinks straight. So um, hopefully at least one of her parents will see this podcast so that they can know a bit of what's going on with her. All right, tonight I will discuss the politics of interracial porn in a nameless performer's personal yet public life. And I'm going to give or issue a warning about an individual who likes to call himself Ski Mask Andy. I feel that either Ski Mask Andy or someone um, who's affiliated with him has been trying to get my attention for the past few days. I chose to ignore their prompts, but as of today, the um, performer or ex-performer who I've decided I'm not going to name her. Absolutely not. Because I don't know whether it was she who contacted me unprompted or whether Ski Mask Andy has possession of her social media and is posting as her. I don't really know what's going on, but here's what I do know. I know that over the years, And I do want to preface this by stating that the only reason I ever took interest in regards to monitoring the performer who I will not name in this podcast is due to her mother's prompting. Her mother, from my perspective, cares about her daughter's well-being and safety very much. And for a parent to contact me When it comes to their child, I know that I'm on their list of last resorts. I take the position that I inadvertently hold very seriously because I have parents who care about me tremendously, who did not have anybody to reach out to when I was making some of the most stupid choices that I could have possibly made several years ago. So to Ski Mask Andy, tonight I'm going to disclose some information about you, which you have yourself made public. No, is it anti- Due to the extreme racist and graphic language that Ski Mask Andy utilized in the following clips, YouTube will not allow me to repost what he said. If you would like to hear in its entirety what he said, you can visit politicalnewstime.com. Just to summarize, in these clips, Ski Mask Andy relates how he feels that people of color and people of a certain faith have a nefarious agenda and are the parties who are in actuality behind the interracial porn production within the United States, which he feels is an agenda to diminish the sect of humanity he believes he belongs to. These are the real races. So let's go ahead and get into what I want to talk about this evening, which really revolves around 
the politics of interracial porn. Interracial porn is a powerful thing. <laughs> it's so powerful that the industry itself, the adult industry, which is dependent upon interracial porn, which is the foundation of what the adult entertainment industry is, is attempting as of current to eradicate the descriptor interracial from their databases and their media outlets. AVN is one. AVN is run by an individual known as Tony Rios. Um, IAFD, the Internet Adult Film Database, is another one. I think that they've completely eradicated or deleted that descriptor because here's the thing. It bit them in the butt. Interracial porn made the industry a ton of money, but the adult entertainment industry is not only about selling the product of interracial porn. It's also about creating digital billboards. In the beginning, it was videotape, actual physical videotape billboards for women who work double time as not just porn stars, but as prostitutes, okay? That's really why interracial became such a taboo thing when it comes to adult content. Um, the white performers who are also prostitutes who did not do interracial porn could demand a higher dollar amount from the Johns who book the escorts or prostitutes, who for the most part, the most prominent and highest dollar prostitute Johns tend to be racist white males, at least within the United States of America. And these men are incredibly particular when it comes to whether or not the white prostitutes that they see have publicly, at least, provably been with black males or not. Now, there's a multitude of reasons why. Most of them are political. A lot of people claim not to be racist publicly, but that's not necessarily the case when it comes to what's going on behind closed doors, how they truly feel in their souls and in their hearts. Okay, but also for um, reasons that have to do with personal insecurity. A lot of white males feel um, not as um, n not as sexually virile as black males are said to be. They feel like, oh my gosh, all these black men have such large genitalia. I feel so teeny tiny in comparison to them. And a lot of that has to do with um, a certain image that the adult entertainment industry has put out, be it factual or fictional, when it comes to black men over the years. Before I continue, I am going to read a couple of tweets that I posted earlier this evening in regards to this issue because I feel that it's important. And actually tonight's podcast does relate to a um, podcast that I posted the day before yesterday in regards to the Stormy Daniels, Donald Trump situation and what I believe may very well be a lie that another party involved told in regards to her involvement in the situation, all right? But here's what I posted tonight. The reason as to why the adult film industry is attempting to eliminate the IR descriptor is so that it's more difficult for racist white males to discover that certain white female porn stars that they like and may want to book as escorts have been with black men. Pimps and madams have found that racist white males tend to be the highest dollar and most consistent clients of prostitutes. Media outlets like AVN and databases like IAFD cater to the sex trafficking gangs in actuality, not the legitimate adult entertainment industry. Because here's the reality. If they did cater to the legitimate adult entertainment industry, they wouldn't be shooting a tremendous amount of pornographers in the foot who specialize in creating interracial content by trying to eradicate that descriptor. I'm a black woman. I'm an ex-performer. I partook in what would be considered interracial content when I was a performer. Am I ashamed of that? No, I don't have any issue with that at all. I don't have any issue at all with the descriptor interracial. But 
then again, I'm a black woman, aren't I? The women who do have an issue with that descriptor are not really black performers, at least not any thinking black performer. The black performers who are speaking out against the IR descriptor right now, unfortunately are not the brightest bulbs. But then again, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to be an adult entertainer, do you? If anything, it's to a black performer's advantage. And are we not in the um, political movement Black Lives Matter right now? I thought we were, unless it ended today and no one made me aware. Do the black lives not matter of those who are adult performers who the IR descriptor is to their advantage? Do you not care about the black males who um, performed in the in Greg Lansky's Blacked series? Are they not important to you? White females who have a problem with it? I guess not. I guess not. See, here's the thing. White women who are adult performers who have made the conscious choice, the decision of their own volition to perform in interracial porn are at a slight, well, I'm not going to say slight, are at a major disadvantage on the um, illegal slave trade, black market, street hooking world when it comes to illegal prostitution opposed to their white counterparts who have not performed in an interracial porn because the white racist Johns who book them being that they are able to see the interracial porn that these women performed and they're upset about it it bothers them so they don't book those prostitutes who should not be prostituting anyway it's all illegal unless you're in certain counties of Nevada so I don't feel sorry for them. No, they made their decision. They need to live with it. The only way that doing the interracial porn affects a white woman's life is if she chooses to continue to use her stage name that she worked under when she took part in the interracial porn. No one is forcing the performer who I will not name or the ex-performer who I will not name to continue using her stage name or to link her current being to that stage name not at all there's no reason for her to contact me in regards to removing any journalism that I posted in regards to her which truth be told saved her life from my blogs not at all the only way that interracial porn affects a white woman's life is if She's still trying to use the guys that she utilized when she shot the porn. That's, that's how it is. And that's why this performer, ex-performer who I will not name, I'm actually very disappointed in her. Because I thought that she was not racist, but she is. She's actually the worst kind of bigot. The worst kind of racist, she's a hypocrite. She's also passing to a degree. Not because she embodies any African-American blood. No. Because she is not exactly comfortable with her faith. If she was, she would not even be dealing with individuals such as Ski Mask Andy, who we're going to get to. I know I'm drawing this podcast out needlessly. But um, if she was more comfortable with her faith and more comfortable with who she is as a person, she would be dating somebody of her faith who likely wouldn't be willing to put up with a lot of her BS. She wouldn't be running around with a lot of these um, redneck racists that publicly she's shown us that she's been running around with for a while. It's time for this performer or ex-performer who I will not name actually to return to her family. It's time for her to leave the city of sin before she ends up getting killed because this guy broke her windshield. That's a warning. 
the next person that she ends up dating is going to end up trying to break her face. And that's something I don't want to see. But I know how the world works very well. I know how certain kinds of guys are. And um, some of the worst men in America who treat women the worst reside in the state of Nevada. They definitely do.